Hello and welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Confusion abounded late last week about the fate of around 21,000 Australian sheep in a Pakistani feedlot, with importers winning an injunction against a government order to slaughter the flock because it was diseased. Despite being given the all clear by Pakistani quarantine authorities and a negative disease test carried out by the National Laboratory, Local authorities ordered the mob's destruction after a second test carried out at a poultry centre found the animals were sick and unfit for human consumption. Pakistan industry and Australian officials both disagreed, saying the animals were healthy. The Federal Department of Agriculture hit out at conflicting media reports about the culling of allegedly diseased Australian sheep in Pakistan. The importer and exporter are now seeking support for further testing to prove the health status of the sheep. The sheep are being held in a feedlot. DAF has been advised the sheep have adequate food and water. A rare combination of high prices and good yields is offering Australian grain growers some of the strongest selling conditions since 1996. And this combination was driving a surge in interest in forward selling as grain markets rallied. National Australia Bank Agribusiness Director of Commodities, Tim Glass, said there had been a big shift in thinking on forward selling in recent months, but decisions now needed to be made quickly. Tim Glass said he encouraged growers to review their marketing strategies before harvest as expectations of increasing supply in the Northern Hemisphere put pressure on prices. NAB Agribusiness had had a big boost in inquiries from growers looking to take advantage of the current prices, which were around $100 higher than they were at harvest eight months ago, he said. It, it wouldn't be long until Australian growers can accurately estimate their yield with confidence, so he encouraged growers to see if the prices on offer represented a big enough incentive to selling forward. The Senate has agreed to an urgent inquiry into the biosecurity risks of importing fresh potatoes from New Zealand, according to National Senate Deputy Leader Fiona Nash. National Party members had also demanded that the Federal Agriculture Minister, Senator Joe Ludwig, instruct Biosecurity Australia to conduct a fresh risk analysis of importing spuds from New Zealand. There was considerable concern from Australian vegetable growers that the range of diseases which afflict New Zealand potato crops could be transmitted to our farms should imports be allowed, Senator Nash said. The national peak industry body for potato growers, Ausveg, have put a very strong case arguing flaws in biosecurity's review of import conditions for fresh potatoes from New Zealand. New Zealand growers had been hit hard by pests, including silid and zebra chip which Ausveg put the cost of the outbreaks to $200 million. The tomato pest, Silid, can feed off crops such as potatoes, tomatoes, capsicums, cucumber and eggplant, which represent almost $1.5 billion of Australian agricultural production. Carbon Farmers of Australia is staging a conference and expo at Dubbo in New South Wales from Monday, October 22 to Thursday, October 25. On the conference agenda will be a diverse range of carbon-related topics and activities, including Carbon Farming 101, Learning the Basics, Carbon Farming Conference, Carbon Farming Expo, Advanced Carbon Farming, National Carbon Cocky Awards. CFA is a not-for-profit company that helps farmers enter carbon markets. The company's principals appeared as expert witnesses before the Senate inquiry into the Federal Carbon Farming Initiative legislation last year. A State of the Nation report into animal welfare in Australia has emerged as one of the key priorities for the coming year, following a gathering of more than 120 delegates in Canberra for the sixth national workshop of the Australian Animal Welfare Strategy. Primary producers, animal welfare groups, scientists, veterinarians, entertainers, sporting bodies, industry leaders and government representatives all with expertise in their fields, were successfully working together under the AAWS to commit and deliver new national initiatives to improve the welfare of animals. AAWS was a national plan which guided activities aimed at improving the welfare of animals 
as well as providing Australia and international communities with an improved appreciation of animal welfare practices in this country. The workshop had shown that despite the varied backgrounds and interests of its members, they are united in the desire to improve the welfare of all animals, AAWS Advisory Committee Chairman Dr Gardner Murray said. Finally, European Union farm ministers have been bluntly told that after half a century of food supply stability, the world was entering a period of instability and, as far as the EU was concerned, a growing dependence on the import of agricultural commodities. The chair of the European Parliamentary Agriculture Committee, Paolo de Castro, warned that the world was on the brink of another food crisis. This would be the fourth time in less than five years this had happened, he said. The only answer to the present wild fluctuations in prices, in his view, was to make food security within the EU a cornerstone of the forthcoming reform of the Common Agricultural Policy, or CAP. EU politicians had a duty to ensure that there was a secure supply of high-quality food for EU citizens, as well as other less tangible benefits, such as meeting environmental targets in bringing forward the next CAP meeting, which is due to be in place in January 2014. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. I look forward to your company next week.